Here's a short sale update of the top 10 legal mistakes sellers and agents make in a short sale. Looking for short sale information? You've come to the right place. Mike Wrigley, certified default advocate, distressed property expert, and your short sale specialist here. Thanks for joining us for another edition of our blog. So let's talk about the top 10 mistakes that sellers and agents make according to the California Association of Realtors. Number one, accepting the buyer with the highest offer without regard to other contractual terms. It's not only price guys, it's also what's involved in the contract that makes a good contract. Not properly handling multiple offer situations with multiple buyers. The guidelines are, pre are pretty strict in there and you have to make sure that you have to handle it correctly or you could end up in trouble. It's not the one you accept, it's the one you reject that you always have to worry about. Not properly handling backup offers. Same type as same thing as number two. It's not the ones that you accept, it's the ones you decline that you have to worry about. Number four, entering an agreement with no earnest money from the buyer or a very small deposit. Now, in the state of California, you have to have consideration to have a binding contract. No deposit, no consideration, really no contract. So really you have no contract at all if you don't take earnest money. Number six, not disclosing known material facts affecting the value or desirability of the property. Now that's huge. If you know something about the property, disclose it. In a short sale, we want to protect you from liability and deficiency from the lender. And then we switch into a regular transaction where we want to protect you from liability of the sale of the house. So it's disclose, disclose, disclose. And let's face it, if you don't disclose it, your neighbor's going to after you move. So let's disclose everything up front. It's better to blow up a deal on disclosures than it is to come back and get sued later. I skipped number five. Number five was entering into an agreement before verifying the buyer's financial ability to, to close escrow. An offer is an offer is an offer is only good if they have the prequal and the funds to close. If they can't close, really you got nothing. And in a short sale, that could be, that could be catastrophic. We could lose the house to foreclosure if we can't close the escrow. So let's jump back down to number seven. Number seven, not providing the buyer with the legally required disclosures. So worse than not disclosing is not giving them disclosures at all. That's just nuts, guys. Don't do that. Number eight is not obtaining the buyer's written acknowledgement that they received the disclosures. So let's backtrack. You got to give them the disclosures. You got to disclose everything that you know, and then you got to get in writing that they received them. And you do that by making sure that they've initialed and signed every disclosure. And number nine is not considering whether the, to have the buyer remove their required contingencies. Now, every deal is written contingent, contingent to uh, inspections. For not every deal, but most deals, contingent to financing, appraisal, and inspections. By the buyer removing his contingencies, he is now locked into the transaction. Yes, he can still back out, but the chances are much less that he will. And number ten is not excluding items from the sale that the seller wants to keep. So naturally light fixtures uh, stove oven dishwasher disposal those are all window coverings those are all included in the sale unless you exclude them if you've got a special ceiling fan or, or family heirloom chandelier that's not included in the sale you've got to get it in writing so that the buyer knows up front otherwise you're going to have problems now a good realtor will be able to help you avoid all these mistakes so make sure you interview at least two realtors before going into uh, listing your house. And if it's a short sale, make sure you're only working with a certified default advocate and a short sale specialist. Ask them how many deals they've actually closed and how many banks they've worked with. Hope that helps. Now, to get a better idea of when your home will be worth what you owe, log on to www.shortsaleandloanmod.info and you'll get a free, uh, no obligation estimate, or give me a call if you got any short sell questions, give me a call. The call is free as well. So you give me a call tonight. Give me a call today. You'll sleep better tonight. We'll, you'll be glad you did. I'll see you soon. Thanks.